Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining. Um, I, I put together a few slides on data masking and subsetting, which we'll cover before handing over to Smith for demonstration and then uh, potentially uh, Q&A and hands on. Um, so just to introduce myself, I'm Fergus Maham. I'm a principal techno technology architect based in Oracle in Dublin. Um, I've uh, over 20 years architecting business solutions, and I'm looking forward to sharing some of that insight with you today. Um, this week, we're obliged to show this, unfortunately, this is uh, our safe harbor statement. It's just to say that this presentation is for information purposes only, and nothing in this presentation is legally binding. So um, the many, uh, many uh, of you will have seen in previous webinars that we covered other aspects of data security. And uh, data masking is one aspect, but I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes before going into masking, just talking about uh, the importance of data security security as a whole uh, before going into the detail of masking. And you will all, I'm sure you all know, those of you who are running Oracle systems, that uh, data is the lifeblood of a modern organization. And it's not just a burden to be, uh, to be managed at the back end of an application. Um, valuable insights can, are available with the data to make, make data-driven decisions and to grow your institution. So your data is what drives the organization and really, really needs to be protected. Um, and not only does it need to be need to be protected from your own perspective, but it needs to be protected. You know, you're, you're legally obliged to protect the uh, data under law to secure your data. Um, there, I don't know whether you, the GDPR regulations are fairly strict. Um, a cyber attack occurs. Uh, they reckon every 30, 39 seconds, so it's quite a, a threat to your organisation. Um, the data lives in the database. Uh, this obviously makes it a target. Um, it's very much a, an organizational reputational risk issue and on the uh, and is on the agenda of sea levels so uh, you know you probably would have heard an awful lot of the stuff that goes out the uh, the fines that are out there Google fine 50 middle million <coughs> British Airways 20 million Marriott hotels 18 million so the investment in the investment in prevention is a much better strategy than investment in remediation so really uh, what we're saying here is that data security is important. Um, if you're running uh, Oracle databases, you really should make sure that those databases are as secure as possible and that you uh, invest in as much prevention as you possibly can rather than uh, remediation. So many think uh, that if, uh, many, you see many organizations looking at data security and looking at a firewall to do prevention. Um, but in actual fact, that there's a huge amount <coughs> of uh, additional uh, areas where an attack can happen. So for example, uh, if a DBA or an end user has been compromised, that account can be used to directly access the database. Uh, data traveling over the network can be compromised. Uh, administrators with direct access to data can compromise an organization. So non-production of copies of the database, uh, which are the subject of <coughs> excuse me, today's, uh, uh, today's session, can also uh, be a subject to uh, compromise. So, the, uh, so what we want to do is make sure that we are as um, free as possible from any compromise that might happen. So, um, there's a number of products and technologies combined uh, to form the maximum uh, security architecture. If you're running Oracle systems, I would encourage you to review the MSA. We are, we are, so we also offer. Uh, DBSAT was a database security assessment tool to assess how secure your DB environment is. Um, speak to your account manager and how to get the best of this tool. Um, the MSA uses multiple products working in tandem. Um, the database firewall, which examines SQL statements uh, coming into the database. The database vault ensures segregation of duty amongst DBAs. TDE which ensures that all data is encrypted in motion and at rest. Auto Vault ensures all activities are audited across the applications, data, operating systems, and stores as data security, securely. Key Vault allows you to centrally manage, and decrypt, centrally manage encryption keys. And finally, data masking and subsetting allows you to create copies of production data, replacing real data with technically consistent, consistent fictitious data. So now we're on to uh, data masking and subsetting, which is really what we're talking about today. So why should we? Why should you do data masking? 
Well, uh, you can uh, limit the, the sensitive data proliferation. So more copies of production data means more risk to a data breach. Often these are just direct clones of production. So normally, often you get uh, uh, production data being copied, making uh, in, into non-production data, and they're just cloned. And in often cases, they're not they're not subject to the same security as production data. Um, you want to share what is necessary. So often companies have to share production data set with internal or external uh, parties or uh, development partner, partners, testing partners, um, freedom of information requests, et cetera. Um, to do this, we must be able to obfuscate or remove sensitive data. And we must be able to comply with data privacy laws and standards. So GDPR, for example, you all know about uh, PCI, DSS, et cetera, all require non-production data to be protected. Um, it's not here. We're just showing some of the um, some of the rules and regulations that you need to uh, adhere to. So PCI DSS, for example, production data uh, is not to be used for testing or development purposes. The EU GDPR regulations um, you need to to uh, pseudo anonymize uh, uh, personal data. The HIPA Act in the States. So you must remove specific identifiers for the individual. And individuals, relatives, etc. So there are, as well as as well as um, operational reasons, there are legal and um, regulatory reasons why you need to mass data in a um, in a non-production environment. So what does uh, data masking and subsetting do? Well, essentially, um, we take production data, and we uh, when we're moving it to non-production data, we mask it, and uh, we, uh, we we mask it in such a way that we keep the same data structures and relationships um, between the production and non-production data. So, in, so that when new applications are running, they know that the data is consistent and the same type of data is in the non-production environment as the production. Uh, so in, in a little bit more detail, um, what data masking does is it replaces sensitive data with fictitious but realistic data that, that remains useful for analytical development and, and other purposes. Um, it obviously preserves the integrity, helping ensure that apps continue to work with the mass data. So any applications that are expecting a credit card number, for example, in one format, it'll still be in that format in the, uh, in the, in the, um, in the non-production environment. Um, it provides comprehensive and flexible masking options to meet diverse requirements. So, here, in, you know, in some some types of data you want to mask in one way, other types of data you'll need to mask in another way. So I'll come into some of the detail of that in a couple of minutes. And then, um, if you are um, an Oracle Applications customer, then um, many of the of the Oracle applications come with predefined masking routines. So, for example, HR data, uh, purchasing data, financial data, um, they uh, there are. Uh, pre-built routines to get the, that data uh, mass when it's taken out of production. Okay, lots, there's lots of pre-configured masking format templates that we can reuse our results. So, but you can also flexibly define what the format or how you how you what the rules are for masking. So, for example, you can you can define a column with, 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 might have a format of three digits, a height and three digits. Uh, and a, a hyphen and then four digits that'll be maintained when you take it from production into non-production. Um, so it, it just makes sure that the data that is brought from production is um, in the same format, albeit different uh, 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 quantity or different um, the values in the non-production system. Some examples here. Um, we can mask based on conditions. So here, for example, on the, in the in the first case, we're taking the um, the national insurance number, and if it's the UK, it's it's two digits, four numbers with digits at the end. If it's US, it's three and then dot two, then dot four not, uh, for not, not numbers. So just masking based on the on the condition of the um, of, of another uh, field. There's, you can do as simple as shuffling records where you have. The uh, a, a record of a, a particular individual or, or uh, field, field field is uh, shuffled and made into another uh, uh, applied to another. It's just literally shuffling records. Um, uh, we can also deterministic that that say for example we want to mask employee identifiers 
consistently across all schemas and databases. So you mask the, the employee and that, that employee records or fields or uh, table is automatically kept the same masking across HR and finance, for example. Um, on the next slide, we'll give you a fuller list of what they all are. So, you know, we've got uh, conditional masking, which we covered. Um, deterministic masking, we covered. Um, compound masking is, is can be quite powerful where we want to, uh, where we have a number of fields that could form a group, for example, like a, a, um, a, a uh, address group for uh, state, postcode, country, uh, post, have that as a, as a group, and then that automatically is masked like that across all masking activities in, in non-production environments. So a whole series of different uh, methods and uh, transformations that, that, uh, that we can use. So that was masking. So what, what we've done with masking is taken uh, production data and masked it sensibly into non-production in, in, into non environments. The other side of the masking and subsetting uh, suite is obviously subsetting itself. So what subsetting allows us to do is to take a subset of a, um, of a production database or any database for that matter, but it's normally a production database and, and uh, uh, reduce the size of that, uh, of that uh, data. Um, what, uh, you know, a number of reasons why you might do it. Um, it obviously minimizes the risk of, uh, minimizes risk by sharing only relevant data with internal and external teams. So once again, if you're if you're sharing data for you know development purposes or reporting purposes, then we can we can uh, uh, size down the production database to reflect that. Um, storage is obviously a very costly or can be a very costly uh, overhead in an organisation. So where we have a proliferation of non-production systems, um, then the more and more of them that we have, the more and more expenses that it can become. So if we can reduce the size of this somehow by subsetting, then that obviously becomes uh, that, that's obviously very attractive. Um, many of our many of our customers our many customers run SaaS applications where they have a number of different customers running the same application. They're running the same application on on their behalf. Um, where you want to try and perhaps uh, extract just the the data relating to a particular customer or subscriber, then then data subsetting is a, is obviously a way of doing that. Um, and and if we want to, to to perform research and analysis on a subset of data, then that's then obviously data subsetting is a good way of doing that. And any e discovery are um, are looking to find uh, um, uh, subsets of data or discovery of, of some type of uh, data data within the production database, then we extract subset of data as, as part of the need of the discovery request is, 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 is very powerful. Um, how can we go about doing it? Well, there's a whole series of methods of, of uh, subsetting your data. Um, you can do it on a relative table size. So for example, just take the first 2 million rows or 10% of a table, a relatively simple way of doing the subsetting. Um, we can do a condition based um, where, uh, you know, it would take all sales for Asia, for example. So we're literally, literally looking at, a, at a, a proportion of the production database and extracting that. Um, or we can, if you're using the Oracle partitioning, then uh, partitioning is a is is a method of, of also a method of, of uh, subsetting is just some of the table partitions that you've already created. You can use them as the basis of of creating a, a subset of the data. So how do we go about uh, implementing the uh, the sub the um, masking and subsetting? Well, the, the first thing we do is we there's four phases in it. Um, we discover data and relationships. Um, we looked at the mask, uh, the masking format and templates, and and what our masking goals are. Um, we pre preview and validate and make any changes that we want to make on the in the strategy and the implement, implementation methodology, and then we execute and transform. So uh, once we execute it, we we can. Uh, we, we execute it either in database or um, in export, and then we can rerun with the same data model over and over again. Um, so there's a number of flexible uh, deployment options. We can either do it in database, where we have minimum, minimum impact on the database environment, or we can do it in export. So um, when, you, when we do it in, in database, we use a staging area. When we're doing it in export, we use an export file. Um, 
But I think that probably something to remember when, if you are running data masking and subsetting that when you're licensing, you only license actually on the on the source. You don't have license on the uh, on on all the targets that you that you run. So the the option need only be run for, or need only be um, need only be licensed for the uh, the source in each case and not all the targets. So I think that's probably enough from me in the uh, in the uh, from the uh, an overview of data masking and subsetting. And I'd like now to hand over to Smith, who will just take it through um, a demonstration of the environment. Okay, everyone. So uh, first of all, uh, like uh, uh, us have already told you the uh, you know steps of it, and we know that we have to uh, run a four step to uh, do the data masking and subsetting. Okay, so I'll show you what I have prepared. Yeah, so we prepared this table, which has uh, uh, sensitive uh, columns like uh, credit card, uh, uh, email ID, and uh, some Qatar ID, uh, I would say. And we will uh, focus on how to mask this by using OEM. Okay. So now let's move. Uh, like, like we can see that we have a credit card table inside the HR uh, schema. Okay. So we'll use these uh, while we are creating the application data model. Okay, so this is our table. Let's let's move uh, into the OEM part. Okay, so this is our. Uh, so first of all, let me show you the Live Labs uh, link where you can go and practice by your own. So this is our Live Labs. Okay, uh, where you can uh, uh, maybe you will get the link. Or uh, Jordan can uh, share the link with you. Uh, let me go to. This. So here you can find the uh, data masking labs. Okay, all the steps is here. You can reserve the workshop for your live labs and follow the steps in the lab. Okay, these are the steps uh, in the lab which you can follow and do the practice by yourself. Okay, and all this step I'll uh, show it to you um, while I'm uh, in this demo. Okay, so first step is uh, we have to create the application data model. So for that, we need to click on create. So let me show you where it is. So in OEM, while you are uh, entering the OEM, you can uh, you have to log in as a sysman, okay? And uh, in this enterprise section in the quality management, you can see the application data modeling, okay? Here you will land to this page, application data model, and you need to create an application data model for it. You have to put a uh, name for your ADM. Uh, let's say test, okay. And then you need to choose the source database. Uh, for this, um, I have chosen uh, EMEA, uh, you know, EMREP. And then continue. It will show you all the list of the schema it has, okay. And uh, like I said, we are uh, create, created one table in HR schema. So I'll choose this. Uh, schema, it will consider it as an application. Okay, all the schema will be considered as an application. So you can choose one or more than one uh, from the list and continue. And your job uh, for the create application data model will be generated. Okay, for this demo, I have already created it. Uh, mass credit, uh, I gave the name. And after you, uh, you know, uh, after you. Uh, add all the uh, you know schema and the table of it. Uh, you will see the status of it here. Okay, while it is uh, showing you the succeed, then you click on this and go on edit. It will show you all the applications uh, data inside it. Like HR schema has uh, these many tables inside it. You can see all of that. If in your database the parent-child relationship has been uh, mentioned. Then you can see them as well. Okay. In case there is uh, some non uh, uh, dictionary uh, based relationship you have, you can discover them as well. Okay. Uh, like this by, let's say, by column name or by the column data. Yeah. So, application, you have to choose the application and the object. You have so, so let's say, a uh, credit card. And you can you can choose them as the primary key or the foreign key. You can do that manually. Okay, if you don't have that uh, mentioned in your database, you can do that manually as well. 
so here you can see like like it will discover all the parent child relationship as well and then we have the sensitive column we have to uh, choose our sensitive column like for which column we want to mask okay so for that we will create a uh, discovery job where we choose the application and the sensitive column type let's say for our demo we'll choose credit card email id and the qatar id okay yeah one more thing if you have sensitive column type uh, i mean you have some column which is not there in this list you can create your own as well okay i'll show you how so while you are in application data models uh, page here is the action you can go to the sensitive column type you can see all the listed uh, or or uh, you know all the predefined uh, sensitive type here Uh, if you find any other uh, or you want to create your own uh, sensitive column type you can uh, always create okay like i have created this qatar id okay so for that you have to put your column name uh, and it will search uh, for for the search pattern you have to give some uh, uh, details like column name it, it might be qatari id it might be qid it, it might be only id okay it will search by that name if any column has id or uh, uh, qid or qatar id it will put that uh, or it will discover that uh, capture that information okay uh, like that you can create your own uh, sensitive uh, column types so we are here to edit the application data model and choose our sensitive columns so like i said you can create the discovery jobs by selecting your application and the selecting uh, the sensitive column types and then in the discovery jobs you can see uh, like this you can see the columns which have uh, the credit card number or email id you can see all of them uh, all the all the table which has these columns you can see uh, them in here okay and then you have to choose which table which column you want to select as a sensitive uh, Uh, data type so for our uh, demo purpose uh, we have chosen this credit card table okay and uh, this email id and in credit card table yeah, credit card number id so we have to change the status uh, from undefined to sensitive so you have to choose that particular uh, row and here you can choose the status of you can change the status from undefined to sensitive and after that uh, while you are uh, click on okay you can see your uh, sensitive types here in case you have uh, not uh, i mean your discovery job uh, has not uh, discover some columns or if any column mm -hmm. added later point of time you can always uh, add that column uh, manually as well okay so by this you can add your column Uh, manually you can search for application object here it will came and you can just choose it okay like that you can do this so application uh, data model is done so what we have see, uh, what we have see uh, in it is we have collected the metadata of the application okay our application uh, is a char inside it we have object uh, called credit card number and we have selected some sensitive column type as credit card number credit card email address and the qatar id okay so our application data model has been created this is a one time process you can reuse it uh, uh, repeatedly reuse it okay so let's say you want to um, you have added some more columns you just need to uh, add that column to this application id no need to create that from the scratch okay so first step is done here now we will move to our second step which is uh, we have to create a masking uh, definition okay so for that we have this uh, masking definition created let me show you this so while you are going to the masking definition page it will ask you for the name you can give it by uh, your preferences and here you have to choose the application data model which you have already created okay and according to that you can see the reference table uh, database of it okay now uh, the sensitive column we have uh, chosen there we have to add them and uh, choose a format for it suitable format uh, masking format for it so for by uh, how to add it so we'll click on add we'll choose the schema 
okay and click on search so all the schema sensitive uh, type schema uh, we have chosen will be uh, given here you just need to click on uh, add and it will be it will be uh, present in this page okay and uh, then the next step is we have to choose the format for each sensitive column so we'll click on format okay now here uh, as as you know already that we have um, uh, there are uh, predefined formats in our library okay uh, very extensive uh, centralized uh, formats we have let's say you can you can export them from the library or you can create your own okay there are two sets so so if you want to export them from the library like you said like you can see here for credit card details we have so many type of formats present here okay you can select one of them and uh, export them import them okay or you can create by this format entry so we have array list we have delete uh, so many formats uh, type we have you can use these uh, combinations uh, to make a a uh, suitable format for yourself okay and 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 you can see you can preview or validate the data before applying the mask job okay so here you uh, for credit card details i uh, created a format and i can see the sample after masking my data will be look like this okay if i'm happy with the result uh, i'll go ahead if i'm not then i can change it here okay before doing the masking job you can do always uh, change these things so for credit card like like credit card we will um, uh, we will create for email id like uh, email id i have chosen this uh, for for uh, at the rate and domain name it should be a fixed string like at the rate gmail.com okay and before that what we have the name that should be randomly generated characters okay and if we see the sample of it we can see so after masking you can see your data like this the name will be randomly generated and your at the rate domain name will be at the rate gmail dot okay so like that you can do and another one i have created for it is uh, katari id so i have the id uh, with me so i have created a array list of uh, dummy data okay i have uh, i have 10 uh, data in it so what it does it after masking it will take the mask it will take these data and put that instead of original data okay so like you can see here uh, and and if you can see the samples uh, of the of the data you can see one of the data from these values okay i have uh, created my own array list like this you can create your masking definition and add your own uh, format uh masking format for it suitable for my for it and then click on okay okay now our masking definition has been generated so uh, we will generate the masking script for it okay and uh, for that we have two approaches for masking we have two approaches one is mask in database another one is mask in export so mask in database means uh let's say you have already cloned your production database to non production database and uh, you want to mask uh, inside that database all the all the uh, data in that uh, database you want to mask that then you have to choose this uh, result okay you have to choose this uh, masking database uh, approach and if you want to uh, share that information let's say you have thousand of rows but you want to give a testing de uh, department uh, some hundred rows or something like that okay so always then you have to mask in export or or you can subset the data after doing this masking job and all or uh, you know creating this masking definition you can subtract the data uh, into a dump file and that dump file you can share with your partners your uh, third parties your development team or testing team like that okay so here uh will uh, check on masking database and then in named we will uh, give a uh, database credentials and you can always uh, schedule your job according to your preference like immediately or later point of time you can give that as well okay for for us we will uh, choose immediately and click on submit okay so now our job for the uh, creating the uh, generate the script is uh, now ready okay uh, here you can see the status script generated for job scheduled you can refresh it 
uh, and you can see the status will be changing. Okay, you can see a real time uh, status of it. Uh, so while we're doing this, uh, it will take some time. And actually, it is dependent upon your uh, database size or your you know your data of uh, your database. So it will take some time to generate the script. In case you have in-house scripts or something like that, you can import them as well. Okay. Uh, so these are some things. And if it's not ready, okay. Now we can see that our script is generated. So now we will move to our last step, which is schedule a masking job. Okay. Now here you have to give your masking job name. Your database will be uh, um, uh, uh, like that. Okay. And then uh, the, the approach which you have selected before masking database or masking export, you, you have to select that. And this, uh, this step you have to check like, um, because we always recommend that you, you, you should use this because it's a static uh, masking. So whatever you will change, it will not, uh, you know, it, you cannot retrieve that. So we recommend that you should, uh, you should not do that on a production database. Okay, this masking uh, job, you should not apply in your production database. That's why to make sure that we have this uh, checklist, you have to check that your, uh, your selected target is not a production database. Okay. Now then, uh, as usual, we have to give our host credentials and um, the database uh, credentials. And here, uh, schedule the job uh, immediately or later point of time. Okay, uh, and then submit. Now our job for masking is also uh, submitted. Okay, let me sorry about. Chosen a wrong uh, masking definition. So for our definition is masking definition eighty two. Uh, okay, our all the steps are there. Okay, our masking job is scheduled. Okay, again you can see the uh, masking job uh, running. You know uh, the real time um, status of it is running in which. Uh, uh, stage or whatever you can see uh, in that. So while it's doing it, let me show you that uh, you can also create your masking format. Okay, like I said, we have our um, centralized and extensive format uh, already in our library. But if you find that the, you you want to create your own format or you want to uh, you know customize your format, you can do that in in this section. Okay. You can choose any of them. You can edit it, or you can view. You can create like um, these these formats, or you can export your in-house uh, scripts, or you can import from here and apply that uh, in your in your database. Okay, so how to create it? Let's say I, I'll choose a, a format here. I, I'll choose create like. Okay, you will give your name uh, to the column name. Uh, or what you want to select, like, like to say ID or uh, email ID, or uh, let's say we have Aadhaar card number. In India, we have Aadhaar card number, which is a sensitive data, okay? So I'll put that column name and then the sensitive column type you have to choose. So for that, uh, if you have anything in this list, you have to choose them. Otherwise you can create your own sensitive uh, type like I've shown you before, okay? And then uh, you can put your formats like this, or you can choose the functions uh, from from the from the list. Okay, you can do that. So uh, we can see we can now see that we have created our application data model. We have created our uh, data masking definitions. We have seen that how to create our customized format library, and also we can create our sensitive column types. Okay, now our we are in the last step where we have done just, you know, schedule our masking job and you can see that, so that yeah, our masking job is succeeded. That means our data has already been masked. So let's see the results. Okay, this is another tab just to show you that we have data changed or not. So I'll, I'll uh, what I did is I'll, uh, in this, uh, I'll, I'll create another tab in SQL Developer and I, I want to show you the result, before, after result, okay? Okay, okay now you can see it. Thank you. 
in the job, maybe I have done some. Uh, okay, so in that time, if you have any questions, please, uh, while it's running, if you have any questions, please, uh, please uh, uh, question that. I'll, I'll try to answer this. Sorry. Did I... Okay. Uh, okay, where it is. Uh, can you see my screen or it's gone? Can you see my screen? Yeah, we see it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So here you can see that this is our original data. Okay. Here, as, as you can see, the credit card number of the first uh, customer ID, it was 198122, something like that. Okay. Last digit was 9067. And after March, you can see it's changed. Okay. Into our uh, given formats. And if you can see the email ID, it was something name at the redportment.com, yahoo.com, gmail.com. And after the masking, you can see the name is changed to some random character and the uh, domain name will be at the red uh, gmail.com. It will be a fixed string because we, we choose that, okay? And the, the Qatar ID, uh, which is there um, in this uh, two seven last digit 934, that is masked to another ID, which I have given the array list. So it will take from that array list and, and uh, mask here, okay? So that's how you can mask your data using this masking and uh, subsetting tool. Now, let me show you how to subset it, okay? Just to, just, just to show you that if you have uh, so many data, right? And you want to uh, extract some of the data from your database, you can do that as well. So what you uh, will do is uh, just create a, subsetting definition, like we create a masking definition. So in this step, we assume that we have already created the application data model and we have created the masking definition, okay? Now we just need to subtract the data into a dump file and that we want to share our third party or other uh, department. So for that, uh, we'll select the application, okay? And then we uh, put some um, object Object rules, let's see if we have, yes, object rules, okay. Uh, which which object or which uh, table you want to uh, subtract, you have to choose that. Uh, for that, you need to click on create and it will ask you for, for, for you, can, you can select in HR schema, you can select all the objects, okay. You can, you can actually sub, subtract some of the data from all the, uh, from overall uh, application or you can specify any specific object if you have, okay? You, you can specify them uh, always. And you can uh, select all rows, or if you want any 10%, let's say I want 10% of this credit card uh, table uh, to be uh, subtracted, uh, so to be extracted, okay? So I have to choose that. Otherwise, uh, there are two options, okay? So one is um, percentage, or another one is uh, conditions where you can put the uh, where condition, like where the customer ID is uh, this or where the, dip, uh, the, the uh, department ID is 100 or like that, okay? You can put your conditions and it will uh, collect the data accordingly. So we put departments 10% uh, rows, okay? You can see the space estimations, okay? In your HR, I can I, you can see here for departments we have uh, ten percent. So some of the rows, uh, twenty seven rows. Okay, uh, you can see that it's it's uh, taken the twenty three uh, rows from there. And here you can choose the data masking definition. Like it will mask your data, then put into the uh, dump file. So for that. Uh, our masking, you know, subsetting or uh, definition is created. Now we will generate the subset. Okay. We will click on it and then action, then generate the subset. Okay, it will ask us uh, the for the credentials. Okay, 
post credentials okay okay and then it will ask you writing subset data to export file or you you want to delete the data from the target data type so here are the options okay uh, writing subset data uh, to a dump file or or if you choose this option it will delete uh, 23 rows in your database okay the, the rows which has been uh, masked it will uh, delete those rows so like this uh, so always it will it is good to um, go with this option like writing the subset data to export file okay and then click on continue okay now it's given you the uh, location where you would like to put the dump file okay you can put that or you can select your own directory path if you have created any okay you can select um any any uh location of your own okay so let, I, let's say i have chosen temp so after the data pump the data pump file name also you can uh, put here okay so after after this uh subsetting it will create a dump file named a test and it will located in temp so like this you can extract your uh, uh, data from a larger uh, perspective i mean you know if you have so many data and you want to extract some data you can subset that you can mask that uh, in parallel and uh, give, give that to different departments and all so that's all for the demo part